all right so hello everyone um this video is about uh, problems where you have multiple op amps okay multiple op amps multiple amplifiers you could say and uh, basically we need to find some sort of current voltage output um, you know something like that so well uh, before going into the problems uh, you know this is just a list of uh, most of the op amps op amp modules that we saw um, the differentiator integrated are excluded and um, this video you know I, I won't be doing problems on them uh, just just the ones that do the arithmetic operations maybe I'll do one with those or those two uh, later on you know uh, when you know when they're combined with other op amps but anyways so so this is a this is a list of all you know you could say the arithmetic operation op amps that we've uh, seen so far okay uh and uh well uh let's just remember that uh, we can refer to that later so uh the steps okay uh before i go into the problems i I'd just like to lightly discuss these um you know steps uh there's uh not nothing too complicated basically what we need to do is you know when we see uh these sort of problems with multiple op amps basically we should first uh identify the types of the op amps okay uh the types so suppose say okay so this one is non-inverting op amp this was in this one is an inverting op amp stuff like that so and it depends on the individual uh you know whether they whether they like to do it uh, as they you know go through the problem as they continue solving it or uh they'd like to uh, you know identify all of them at the beginning i i tend to do it at the beginning because then it gives me a clear idea of what i'm you know uh what i'm going to face later on uh, and just uh, you know it makes the problem more comprehensive uh, to me and okay so first identify the amplifier types that's that's uh, the most crucial step you could say and this is basically the second uh, step is just to tell you you know uh, the flow of the problem you could say you go from the supply end uh, you know where where you get your supply voltages to uh, where you you know it's usually you know these problems a lot of them are you know find about finding the output or the output current something like that so you go from the supply end to the output end all right uh, with that all this discussed, uh, let's just not keep it to theory any longer. Let's let's actually try to solve one of these problems. Uh, we're we're going to start with a simple one. So here we see uh, two op amps, right? So there are two op amps here. Now, uh, as I said, we should we should try to identify the you know amplifiers, the uh, their types. So, and this is how you do it. So you have some voltage. Okay, then you have a resistor. Your feedback. Uh, this is all connected to the uh, inverting input and the non-inverting is with the ground this is definitely uh, this is definitely an inverting uh, amplifier right this is definitely an inverting amplifier so let me write that down so i'll i'll just write i and v okay so this one uh whoops uh this 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 is too light okay uh this should be better so this is an inverting amplifier all right uh then uh, suppose you have some voltage okay uh, here okay here you have some you know you get some voltage I'll, I'll call that um, v output one right so uh, this it, this is just some voltage some voltage um, and it you know there's a resistor here there's uh, another voltage and a resistor parallel with that okay uh, well not exactly parallel but anyways uh, two branches and uh, you know this is this is just drawn a bit differently from how we see uh, here okay but this is basically the you know the summing up the sum the summing amplifier right so you know this is your feedback this is your feedback this is connected here this is connected with your um, inverting input and these two and these two are these two are your uh, branches you know your input branches your supplies so uh, this is definitely your this is definitely your summing amplifier Okay, let me write that down all right so this is your sum i'll just call that sum so uh now that you've identified the two amplifiers let's let's try to solve the problem so i'm i'm gonna go from the here to here right so uh first first we have the inverting amplifier uh the output is the output is uh v output one okay so let's try to find that so v output one is gonna be equal to see uh so the feedback is uh so let's 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 just refer to the formula although we should try to 
uh, make a habit of remembering this. So yeah, uh, this is gonna be, you know, R2 is actually the feedback resistance here. So the feedback is negative of feedback resistance divided by the other one uh, multiplied, by, multiplied by your supply. So here it's 20 kilo ohms, uh, your feedback divided by 10 kilo ohms uh, multiplied by 1.2. So let's write that down. It's negative um, 20, 20 kilo ohms. Actually, both of them are, uh, oh, both of them are in kilo ohms. So uh, the kilos will just cancel out. So 20 by 10 multiplied by 1.2. 1.2 so that gives me let's see um negative negative 2 okay a negative 2 into 1.2 uh, so that's negative 2.4 negative 2.4 all right so now now we have uh this voltage right here well now uh and this is something that you can do on paper uh i often like to do it uh when you're done with an op amp okay when you know that the role of this is you know over you could even just cross this out or maybe even erase it or some, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, blot it out, uh, something like that, because you don't need to focus on that anymore. All we need to focus on is this, right? All we need to focus on is uh, this part right here. That was all we need to focus on is this part right here. Okay. So your problem has reduced to something like this. So you have you know some out some voltage here this we found that this is 2.4 right so this is you know at this node uh your output is too light of a let's do something that way. um so you have uh not 2.4 sorry negative 2.4 okay so negative 2.4 volts uh you know with this uh 20 kilo ohms uh negative 0 .0 0 0.0.2 with this 10 kilo ohms we and and we already said that this is some this is a summing amplifier. So that's just all we have to do is you know uh, fi find the output you know using the summing amplifier formula as simple as that. So let's see. Let's let's try to find that out. Let's try to find that out. Let's see. So the output voltage. Okay. Now, uh, pretty simple. Uh, let's see. First thing is you have you you have your uh, feedback. So that's negative forty. Um, kilo ohms and actually don't exactly need to write the kilo ohms because these two are you know in kilo ohms and they'll eventually the kilos will cancel out but still uh, for now I'll write it um, so the weighted so you have you know in, in the brackets it's going to be your weighted uh, sum of your voltages right right your weighted sum of the voltages here they multiplied by the you know feedback resistance too but anyways uh, inside the brackets, you're going to have the weighted sum of your voltages, basically voltage divided by the uh, resistor next to it. So let's see, uh, negative 0 0.2 uh, divided by 10k, divided by 10k, plus negative 2.4 divided by, divided by 20k, divided by 20k, let's see. And this gives me, this gives me, uh, let's see, uh, let's, let's bring out our calculator. So as I said, the kilos cancel out, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, negative 40, okay, um, so don't even need the negative anymore because that's, that's also cancelling. Uh, minus 0 0.2 by 10 plus minus 2.4, right, uh, divided by 20. And this gives me uh, 5.6. Let's write that down. Voila, we, we have our final answer. That is pretty simple. This is 5.6 volts. So uh, let's move on to our next. So before I forget to say this, uh, just as an acknowledgement, the problems are taken uh, from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits uh, written by Alex uh, Charles Alexander and uh, Matthew Sardi. Anyways, so the next problem is this one. It's it's uh, there's there's a slight trick to it, and that's basically why I put this here. So let's see. Let's let's try to solve this. So uh, what we have here, okay. There's um. Let's see. Let's see. Well, first let's let's try to identify the op amps. Okay, let's try to identify them. So this is a voltage follower. This is a voltage follower. Whatever voltage is here, um, the same thing you're gonna get here. Okay, this is a voltage follower. So I'll say follow. So follow. So, uh, and this one, this one is, it's definitely a summing amplifier, right? A summing amplifier. 
these are your two branches supply and yeah this is your feedback and this is connected to the ground basically what we need to find is this current so um, if we have this output let's say that uh, okay I'll, I'll change color let's say that uh, let's see this is this is your this is your uh, V output okay if you have this this current should be easy to find just you know uh, potential difference divided by resistance uh, but uh, this is this is a, a sum a summing amplifier this is a summing amplifier as I said uh, so and um, anything else so yeah this is a summing amplifier this is a voltage follower uh, if we find this we should be able to solve uh, the problem uh, let's try to do this there's just one issue here um, so, uh, your 1.8 uh, volt, uh, you know, cell, uh, it provides current here, okay. Um, at first glance, there doesn't seem to be any obvious way to find uh, this node voltage, okay. It would be really good if we could find this, you know, uh, then it's just a voltage follower carrying that on. Uh, if we, it would be good if we find this, let's, let's call that V, uh, V1, okay. Let's call that V1. Well. Uh, how do we find V1? That's the question. Uh, okay, so let's see. There's a current here. The main problem, you know, why I'm saying is it's it's a bit tricky. Is there's actually a current here. So it uh, doesn't really seem like, you know, a series circuit. Uh, however, uh, we, you know, and in these problems, well, I, I think I just forgot to say that, but uh, we also need to be a bit aware of, of you know, aware of those, uh, you know, conditions for an ideal of them, you know, especially the two uh, golden rules that we saw, you know, the uh, currents at the input uh, terminals are zero and uh, the inverting input is equal to the non-inverting input. So we just need to keep those in mind because, you know, they're really helpful sometimes, especially here. As you can see, there's actually something going on here uh, because, you know, if, if this... If this let's just see if this is zero volts if this is zero volts this is the way basically your ground um, this also has to be zero volts right if the op amp is working current you know correctly and all this also has to be zero volts so basically uh, you know and also there's another thing really important is there's a current of zero here right yeah there, the input current is zero so there's a current of zero amps here so basically what's happening is so you have, you know, you have this node, you have this node with voltage V1 um, and seems like using, you know, nodal analysis, you should be able to solve it. We uh, seem to have all the potential differences and resistances in order. That's one thing you could do to find V1, you know, use KCL. But also, uh, there's an easier way, there's an easier way. Look here, uh, see, uh, this is this is also the ground, right? This is also the ground. This whole, this whole node is basically the ground. So... If this is the ground, uh, you know, there's a there's a potential difference of V1 across the 3 kilo ohms resistor and the same potential difference, okay, uh, you know, 5 uh, across the 5 kilo ohms resistor, you know, it, V1 uh, and minus 0. So that's V1, okay, and this is also connected here, right? This is, this 5 kilo ohm resistor is also connected, oops, uh, is also connected here. You could say it's drawing current from this 1.8 volt uh, supply. So... Uh, you know, same potential difference, this, you know, and, you know, they're also uh, drawing current from this. You could consider, you know, this 3 kilo ohm resistor and this 5 kilo ohms resistor in parallel, okay? So just, you know, if, if we focus on this part, just to get the value of V1, we, we could we could redraw that part as something much simpler. So let's see, uh, 1.8 volts. And again, uh, you know, this is basically just one way of solving. It's a bit simpler, but uh, if you're uncomfortable with this, definitely go with um, no, uh, you know nodal analysis or KCL. That would definitely give you the same solution too. Uh, but this here, we could consider this as you know one kilo ohm uh, in series with a combination of a three kilo ohm resistor and a five kilo ohm resistor. All right, a three kilo ohm resistor and a five kilo ohm resistor, and basically what we need to find is this V one right here. Okay, um, this V one right here. I'll change color. Uh, let's see, yellow. Yeah, yellow would be good. So what we need to find is this V one right here. Okay, 
So we could we could basically just just use our you know potential divided and you know parallel resistance formula. First thing, what's what's the equivalent resistance here? Uh, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be let's say three is in parallel with five. Let's let's call that let's call that R P R R sub P is three kilo ohms in is in parallel with five kilo ohms. So this is three multiplied by five, uh, three plus five. Okay. So let's see, this is gonna be, this is gonna be uh, 15 over eight, right? 15 over eight, uh, let's see. 15, 15 over eight. That's, I should have been able to do that in my head too. Yeah, uh, careless. This is one uh, 1.875 kilos, 1.875 kilos, okay? And V1 is, V1 is just the potential difference across, you know, this parallel combination, right? So V1, you know, according to our uh, series voltage, voltage divider formula, V1 is going to be equal to um, 1.875, 1.875 divided by um, some of the series of resistances, 1.875 plus 1, okay? Uh, well, all of these are in kilo ohms, so the kilos just cancel out, uh, multiplied by 1.8, right? 1.8. That should that gives me. Let's see. Uh, I'll just form a fraction here. So our previous answer divided by previous answer plus one, uh, multiplied by 1.8. Multiplied by 1.8. That gives me 27 by 23. I'll just keep it like that for now. It's 27 by 23. 27 by 23. Works. All right. So. So pretty good, pretty good. We have V one right here, and then if if we have V one, what's 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 the what's the voltage here? What's the voltage here? As we said, this is this is a voltage follower, right? This is a voltage follower. So whatever voltage is here, the same voltage, the same voltage is gonna be here. So this one is also V one, right? So now we just need to focus on uh this 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 part right here. So I'll I'll, I'll try to I'll try to separate that. So now we just need to focus on this part right here. Okay. So this is basically your summing amplifier. You you know the you you know the you know potential different you know voltage here. That's that's also your V one, right? This is this whole thing is the same node, right? This whole thing is is the same node. So this is V one. This is V one. That's also V one. You know these are your two supplies. Then you know the resistances and then you know your feedback. So let's let's find the output for this uh, output for the summing amplifier that should be pretty easy let's see um the output for your summing amplifier is basically your um your uh feedback and uh, again all of these are in kilo ohms actually i'll avoid writing the kilo so let's see negative 10 negative negative of your output multiplied by the weighted sum of your volt uh, of your supply voltages so V1 by 2 plus V1 by 5, okay, V1, V1 divided by 2 uh, plus V1 divided by 5, V1 divided by 5, all right, and this gives me, let's see, uh, let's, let's use our calculator, let's see, negative, negative, oops, um, not like this, negative 10, okay, uh, multiplied by, I'll factor out the V1, so our previous answer, I'll just factor that out, um, 1 by 2, 1 by 2 plus 1 over 5. Okay. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5. Um, looks good, looks good. So this is gonna be equal to um negative 189 by 23, okay, or approximately minus 8.217. I'll I'll just leave it like this. So negative 189 by 23 volts, negative 189 by 23 volts. Okay. I, I just don't want to make an approximations until we get to the final answer. That's why I'm leaving this this is fraction. I'm pretty sure it's probably infuriating to a lot of you know those who are studying electrical engineering. Um, it is you know we usually don't really like seeing fractions so much uh, as you know numerical answers. But anyways, uh, we are not done yet. What we need to find is this current right here. Okay, we need to find is this current right here. That's pretty easy. The vol you know the voltage across this is zero minus uh, the output. And that's divided by four kilo ohms. Okay, that's divided by four kilo ohms. That's the resistance. So our output current, um, our current right there is gonna be equal to zero minus 
the output voltage divided by 4 kilo ohms or 4000. Now you need to really need, need to be mindful of the kilo. Uh, so let's see. It's going to be equal to um, negative, oops, not again, negative of my answer divided by uh, 4000, 4000. Okay. And this gives me, this gives me um, 2.054, 2.054 to the minus 3 um uh, amps okay or i could write it as 2.054 milliamps okay so i could write it as 2.054 milliamps 2.054 milliamps well uh, that should be my answer that should be my answer so uh we have basically solved this problem you know there was just a slight trick to it and that's the thing we uh do really need to be mindful of some of these properties of ideal uh op amps because you know they they do tend to come in use in these problems sometimes. Next problem is this one. So yeah, this one, this one has three amplifiers, it seems. So um let's see, let's see. Uh here you have, you know, you have some voltage. Um this this goes uh, through a resistor, and then you have you know this your feedback, and this is your uh inverting input, and your non-inverting input is plugged to the ground. So this is definitely this is definitely an uh Inverting amplifier. This is an inverting amplifier. So I and V. The next one. Okay, so some voltage. Okay, so let's 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 say that you know this this voltage right here. You know the output from this one. Okay, and the one that the voltage on this at this node is V output. Wait, that that looks like a zero. V output one. Okay, if that's the case. Okay, so you have you have uh, some voltage uh, through some resistor this is connected to your uh, non-inverting input okay and then you have um through the ground okay so you have yeah you have uh let's see yeah this this 70 kilo ohm resistor is connected to your ground okay uh, and also your inverting input and this is your feedback okay so this is your feedback diagram uh, is drawn in a slightly confusing way this is your feedback this is your um you know this is this is another resistor connected to the ground so uh it seems like it's pretty similar it's pretty similar to our um non-inverting amplifier okay our non-inverting amplifier the only difference is that um there is a resistor between the inverting in uh you know the non-inverting input and uh the voltage the voltage source uh but is that a problem is that a problem well actually uh no and let's let's see why because here okay if you just consider uh that the current uh into this you know input okay the non-inverting input what is it it's zero right it's zero so if it's zero then there's no potential drop uh across this you know 100 kilo ohm resistor right so uh whatever whatever you know uh you know voltage is at this node um, this node, you know, this this node has the same voltage, right? This node has the same voltage, so this is also going to be your same voltage. Okay, this is in fact like um, you know, if you consider just from this part, okay, if you consider just from you know, starting from this portion and let's separate this, this is uh, without a doubt, this is without a doubt, uh, your uh, your non-inverting amplifier. There's no doubt about that. It's just uh, you know, me saying that this uh, you know, the node voltage here is going to be the same as this. Okay. So this is definitely your um, non-inverting amplifier. This is definitely your non-inverting amplifier. Right, so I'll write uh, non-inverting, non-inverting. Okay. And the last one, the last one, yeah, it's definitely an inverting amplifier. So uh, let's see, if if we say that, um, I'll, I'll choose, uh, I'll choose, uh, let's see, purple here. Okay. So if, if there's, there's an output voltage uh, V, uh, output to here okay, so this is just some voltage again you know same structure as same structure as this okay this is uh, definitely an inverting amplifier it's definitely an inverting amplifier all right so let's let's try to do this and then you know you have your output right here let's try to solve this one so uh, first I'll begin from here okay I'll begin from uh, the left end so your uh, v output one your v output one is gonna be equal to um negative negative of 
uh, your feedback divided by this risk. So 100 by 10, the kilos cancel out. So let's see. Uh, wait. Negative 100 by 10 multiplied by your your uh, supply. So that's 70 millivolts. Um, I'll I'll keep it like that. Actually, I'll keep it like that. So 70 mb, so millivolts. And this is gonna equal. So let's see. This is negative 10. This is uh this is negative 700 millivolts. Okay, this is negative 700 millivolts. Okay, I guess um. So this is negative 700 millivolts. I, I could just write it as um, negative 0 0.7 volts. Negative 0 0.7 volts. So um, that's the that's uh, V output one. All right. So as as we discussed, the same voltage is here. Okay. That's that's your supply for your non-inverting your non-inverting amplifier. So the out the second output your V output two is gonna be equal to the V output two is gonna be equal to and if you remember the formula, it's 1 plus feedback resistance divided by the other resistance multiplied by your supply, right? Yeah. So, 1 plus, let's see, 1, 1 plus feedback resistance. Uh, your feedback resistance is um, 30, 30 kilo ohms. So, I'll just write 30 because the kilos are going to cancel out any this. 30 uh, divided by uh, your other resistance, which is 70, which is 70. Uh, multiplied by multiplied by your uh, your uh, source your source uh, voltage which here is V output one okay this is gonna be your source here okay so we'll write negative zero point seven here okay and this should give me let's see um, it's gonna it's probably not gonna be that uh, neat of a decimal it's probably a fraction so let's see uh, one plus um, 3 by 7, 3 by 7, multiplied by negative 0.7, multiplied by negative 0.7, that gives me, okay, um, well, um, that's simplified really well, that's negative 1 volts, that's negative 1 volts, all right, um, and this one, this one is basically fed into this amplifier, this inverting amplifier, so, uh, at last, uh, and, and this is, you know, your output is basically the output of this inverting amplifier, so, uh, finally, finally, uh, we're almost done. Home stretch. Your output V output is gonna be uh, the output of this. So it's uh, negative uh, feedback divided by the other resistance. So 100 divided by 30. 100 divided by 30. Kilos cancel out. So negative 100 divided by 30 multiplied by multiplied by this voltage right here. This this uh, V output two is. Uh, you know your source source for this amplifier source voltage for this one so it's multiplied by negative one and this one is pretty simple it's um 10 over 3 right so the negatives cancel out so what we have is 10 over 3 volts 10 over 3 uh volts could write it as a decimal too so uh again it's pretty simple if we just had to follow our steps and we got our answer pretty easily uh let's move on to another problem let's move on to another problem Let's see where this one is. So, scroll, scroll. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this this one uh, looks a bit more involved, at least. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Uh, what we have is, okay. So, where sh where should we start? Okay. So let's let's start with A. Okay. Um, some some uh yeah source connected to ten kilo ohms. Then you have, okay. Um. This this one is definitely a summing amplifier. Okay, so you have you know your your branches. These two are your branches, uh, and then you have your you know feedback across your you know across your um, inverting input, and the non-inverting is connected to the ground. This is definitely your uh, summing amplifier. By the way, uh, formally you know for you know those who are also learning about the uh, other type of summing amplifier, which is derived from the uh, you know it's derived from the non-inverting amplifier. Um, this one you should probably call it the uh, inverting summing amplifier if I if I remember correctly. Uh, but anyways, this one is the more common one though. Okay, so yeah, that's one. That's your summing amplifier. This one um, looks pretty similar actually. Yeah, yeah. This this one is again another summing amplifier. So this one is again. Wait, 
uh, first first I'll label this so this one let's let's call the output v output one uh, v output one okay and this one this one is also a summing amplifier so let's let's see so this one is again a uh, summing amplifier so sum and this is your this is gonna be your v output two okay the last one the last one let's see um some voltage and then you have a resistor here feedback uh some other voltage and then you have a resistor and, and one resistor connected to ground this is actually a differential amplifier right this is actually uh it's, it matches your differential amplifier so this is your differential amplifier let's see let's let's uh, do that in red so this is this is your differential amplifier oops um uh, di okay so let's let's try to solve this one first we'll find uh okay so we're gonna go from the left to the right okay so first let's try to find uh the the outputs v output one and v output two here these two are actually independent and then uh let's let's uh, work on the other one uh the differential amplifier so v output one v output one um uh, is gonna be negative of okay the feedback again the kilos will cancel out so i won't write that 30 negative 30 negative 30 multiplied by the weighted sum of your voltage so uh one divided by 10 plus two divided by 10 okay so one divided by 10 one divided by 10 plus two divided by 10 plus two divided by 10 okay this one uh we can probably do it mentally too so now three over 10 and yeah so negative three basically negative three multiplied by three so that's negative nine volt right let, let us just see so yeah um negative three definitely multiplied by three yeah so that's negative nine volts that's what you get here v output one your v output two um uh it's similar it's similar so uh, it's again a summing amplifier so let's see your v output two is gonna be equal to negative of okay uh feedback which is 20 20 kilo ohms actually Again, kilos will cancel out since all of them are in kilos. Um, your weighted sum of your voltages. So 3 by 10 plus 4 by 10. 3 by 10 plus 4 by 10. Let's see. So 3 by 10, 3 by 10 plus 4 by 10. Okay. So this one is 7 and multiplied by negative 2. So negative 14. So negative 14 volts. All right. So now we have these two voltages. The only one left is your uh, differential amplifier. Before before going, you know, uh, trying to solve this one, uh, one thing we should check is whether the ratio of the resistances are equal or not. Specifically, actually, let, let let's actually label let's 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 actually label the resistances because it makes using the formula easier. So, according to you know the uh, you know differential amplifier video, the way we labeled it, this is R one, this is R two, this is R three. Uh, and this is R4, okay, uh, and, you know, uh, this is V2, this is V1, okay, but, yeah, uh, our labels, surprisingly, actually, say, you know, they're pretty similar, so I won't relabel really them. Anyways, so, yeah, let's, let's see if the ratio of the resistances are equal or not. Uh, what we, what we should look into is, uh, well, actually, we can just mentally do it. So, R1 by R2 is uh, 20 by 40, that's half, okay, that's half, okay, and, uh r3 by r4 is 60 by 10 and that is 6 and these are definitely not equal these are not equal so this one wouldn't simplify to you know our uh you know our uh, you know simpler formula here okay which is r2 by r1 v2 minus v1 we're actually gonna have to use you know this big formula so this one doesn't simplify let's see so um if we have to use that if we have to use that let's let's just let's just go right into it so my um, V output, my V output is going to be uh, R2 by R1, R2 by R1. So 40 by 20, 40 by 20, 40 by 20, multiplied by 1 plus 1 plus R1 by R2, which is 20 by 40. I'll, I'll just write 0 0.5 here. I'll just write 0 0.5 here. So 20 by 40, which is 0 0.5. Uh, plus, oh sorry, not plus, divided by uh, 1 plus R3 by R4, which is 6. We, we did that, so which is 6. Uh, so this is 
one plus six. Okay. Uh, minus well, not minus. Okay. This this is this is multiplied by your. Uh, this is multiplied by. Uh, this voltage right here. Okay. We uh, we call that V two in the different amplifier video. So, anyways, this is this is your. This is the same as this voltage. Okay. This is you know this is basically this voltage right here. So you're gonna multiply with that. So this is we're gonna put negative fourteen here. Okay. That is basically your source here. Uh, minus minus your uh, other minus your other uh, supply voltage. That's V output one. Okay. That's negative nine. Okay. So minus negative nine. So minus negative nine. The negative the negatives will cancel out. Anyways, so let's let's actually let's actually find the answer right here. Okay. So let's let's bring out our calculator. So forty by twenty is two. Uh, uh, multiplied by uh, 1.5 1 1.5 over 7 um, times negative 14 times negative 14 uh, ne minus minus 9 so that's plus 9 right that's plus 9 all right so and that gives me 12 volts that gives me 12 volts all right so the uh, answer the final answer our v output is 12 volts pretty neat we uh, also did that pretty simply so this is my answer. Let's. Uh, I think we're mostly done. Let's. I. I think this is the last problem. So, uh, let's just quickly try to solve this one. Let's see. Uh, what do we have here? So, uh, yeah, this one. There's. There's a voltage. Um, there's a resistor. Okay, and a feedback. This is connected to your inverting input. Uh, with the non-inverting input, you don't exactly have the ground as as in the you know as in the inverting amplifier. But however. There's one important thing, and you know, uh, did did we do something like that before? Uh, this this is where yeah we did actually we did we did see something similar before. Again, as, as I said, we need to be mindful about our uh, you know uh, two conclusions that we got for you know ideal op amps. You know the fact that the currents into the inputs are zero, the you know value of the you know input voltages are the same. This one also comes really handy here, okay? Because again, same logic as before. The current here is zero. The current here is zero. No voltage drop here. So if this is the ground, this is this also has to be a ground. You know, this also has to be at you know zero volts, right? This is zero volts, so you can treat it as you know the ground. So this is in fact, this is in fact my inverting amplifier. This is in fact an inverting amplifier. So this is an inverting amplifier. All right. Uh, the next one, the next one. Uh, let's let's go here. Okay. So some voltage. Yeah, this is definitely a voltage follower. Okay. So we don't we don't even need to specify that. Let's let's just say that you know there's a 2.25 volts here. Okay, let's just say there's a 2.25 volts here. Okay, uh, same as this one, same as this one. So um this this voltage is going here. Okay, going to here. Um, uh, there's a resistor here, and there's you know uh, another resistor connected to the ground. There's your feedback. There's you know you know so all this is over your inverting input. Again, same logic. The current here is zero. Okay, so this is two point two five, and this is all. This also has to be two point two five volts, right? This also has to be two point two five volts. Anyways, even without that, you know, one thing is for certain. This is you know, if you if you just if you just take this 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 portion right here, this is definitely this is definitely, um, your this is definitely your in uh, non inverting amplifier, right? This is definitely your non inverting amplifier. So I'll write non invert non invert whoops non invert all right so uh that's one that one's done let's let's actually see the last one let's see uh yeah so there's you know you'd have yeah i forgot to label those ones right so i'll actually do that let's let's call this let's call this your you know v output one let's call this your uh, v out all right so uh the last amplifier we have um, this one, let's see. Uh, okay, so as 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 labeling labeling these, so this is V output one. Um, the other one is okay. Let's see. This one, this one is I know V output two. Same as here. So I'll, I'll actually label this here. So this is V output two. Okay. Uh, finally, what you have is is this last one. Again, from right to left. So this one is let's see. Um, you know, two branches. I think we, you know, you see where this is going. Two branches. You know, supplies um, is all over the in inverting input. You know, you have your feedback, and 
here you have uh, you have a resistor okay with with the ground instead of just connect you know just connecting the uh, in non inverting input with the ground but it doesn't really matter because again if this is the ground again this this uh, you know there's no current here this current is zero so if this is zero volts this again this is also zero volts okay um, it's called a virtual ground basically so this also has to be zero volts and then yeah no, this is basically this is basically your summing amplifier right this is basically your summing amplifier all right so um that that then gives me the output volt so uh, let's let's try to solve these uh let's try to solve this problem first you have your i'll, I'll do this one first so first uh, this, you have this uh this output so v output one v output one is equal to negative of your feedback divided by other resistors so 20 by 5 kilos cancel so 20 by 5 multiplied by your source which is 1.5 which is 1.5 all right okay so this was 1.5 right yeah so yeah 1.5 so this is gonna be let's see negative 4 into 1.5 that's negative 6 volts right yeah negative 6 volts that's that's my v output one um we have uh we have two more amplifiers to go to see uh, here, this is a non-inverting amplifier. Uh, your feedback is fifty. Your um, you know other is is thirty. So, uh, you, this this one is gonna be your V output two. It's gonna be one plus one plus your feedback, which is fifty divided by thirty kilos cancel out. So fifty by thirty, and your source is two point two five, right? As we, as we discussed, so the source is two point two five. This two point two five. And this is going to give me, let's see, uh, let's bring out the calculator here. So, 1 plus 5 over 3, 5 over 3, multiplied by 2.25, 2.25. So, this is going to give me 6. This is going to give me 6 volts. Yeah, good. This is 6 volts. All right. So, this one is negative 6. This one is, this one is 6. All right. Uh, we have one more to go. And these two are basically uh, feeding into your summing amplifier okay so uh this is your feedback 100 these are you know these are your branches so let's see the the output for that which is basically the uh our answer with okay, the answer that we're looking for the output is gonna be negative 100 negative 100 that's your feedback uh, uh multiplied by the weighted sum of your voltages right so v output 1 by 40 plus v output 2 by 80 um the kilos cancel out so i'm not writing those so v output one v output one was what that was negative six so negative six over 40 plus plus six okay we output put two um over 80 right we output put two over 80 um this is gonna give me let's see let's let's bring out the calculator so negative whoops uh let's see negative uh 100 negative 6 by 40 uh, plus 6 by 80 right plus 6 over 80 and this is going to give me it's going to give me 7.5 7.5 volts all right so that is my answer again it was pretty simple uh, as long as we follow the you know as well, long as we follow the order correctly uh, identify the op amp spell so uh, again as you can see basically these problems are about you know sometimes the diagrams can be drawn in a confusing way, and even more so than this one. Uh, all we need to do is um, just just match with our, you know, just match with these types of uh, these, you know, these uh, amplifier types. Okay, uh, identify the amplifier types basically, and then go from you know your supply end, okay, uh, to your output end, okay, one by one, okay, and you should get your answer. Sometimes what happens is you know. Uh, you have an amplifier which doesn't which doesn't really match any of those types. Uh, for those ones, you'll you'll just have to analyze it as you know regular ideal op amp. You know using uh, the facts that we know. Um, and yeah, so that's that's how you solve you know uh, problems multiple.